In today's video, we'll be taking apart a jigsaw to determine what the problem is with the switch. To take apart our jigsaw today, we'll be using two magnetic parts trays, one needle nose pliers, one magnetic pickup, a multi-bit screwdriver, and a multimeter. So to take apart our jigsaw, our first step is to start removing the screws and looking at what parts we can remove that may block disassembly. In this case, we've got a plastic guard that needs to pop off. We'll take that off. And we have a shoe, which won't stop the thing from opening, but it does pose a bit of an issue. So we will remove that as well. And set it down exactly the way we removed it from the jigsaw. And if you may have noticed from other videos, I tend to start at the cord, work my way counterclockwise, and start backing off each screw. Once we have each screw backed off, we can then go and see, we've already got a nice and loose there, nice and loose, nice and loose. Everything's opening up. That means there's no hidden screws behind labels or under rubber, or there's no adhesive, there's no quick grips holding this together. It's simply screws, which is usually the case. So at this point, we're gonna remove the screws, and this is where our parts trays come in handy. When we remove them and we put them in our tray, all we do is double check to make sure each screw is identical. If they're identical, it doesn't matter which order we really put them in. We've loosened that screw, but it's too deep and we can't really get it out. This is where we either use a needle nose pliers and we go in and we can grab the screw and pull it out, or our handy little magnetic pickup just drops in, locks onto the screw and pulls it out. We drop it in our tray. We continue on till we have all the screws fully out and in our tray that are on the outside. Then we'll start on the inside screws and do the same process. At this point now, we're safe to open it. So we're just gonna slowly let it open itself partially and just gently, and while we're opening it, we're listening to see if we hear any parts fall or anything go wrong. We're looking at the switch to see whether the switch is broken or whether it needs to be replaced. To do that, we follow the main cord and you can notice there's the white heavy gauge and the black heavy gauge going to the switch. We'll pull the switch up gently. Try not to bend the wires too much because if we keep the wires in their natural bend and I let go, it automatically goes back to where it wants to be and I don't have to try to fight to figure out where all the wires belong. If I lift that up, I can see there's my white big one from down below and there's my black coming up. So there's my power coming across to the other side. So to figure out whether the switch works, what we have to do is see whether when we press the switch, whether we have power being transferred over to the wires that lead over to the motor. In order to test to make sure this switch works, what we're gonna use today is a multimeter. You can use all sorts of different methods, which we'll talk about in other videos, but today we're gonna use a multimeter to determine whether that power can go through. And one of the reasons I like using a multimeter is because this particular one has sound and it lets me know whether we have contact. So always with any tool that you're using, always test it. In this case, if I have power going through, if I have contact, we're gonna get a beep. So I don't actually have to watch the meter, I can actually just listen. I'm gonna put it on the power coming in that we've already traced, coming in from the cord to here. And I'm gonna put the X one on power going out. In this case, we're not getting any power coming out the reason being is, of course, we haven't pressed the switch. So in this case, if we put it on the power coming in and on the power going out, we press that switch. If the switch is working, the meter should start buzzing. So we know this switch is working. It doesn't need to be replaced. If we tested it and we didn't get that signal going across, we simply go online to our parts store, identify the part, Quite often the part number is right onto it and if not you can pull up the jigsaw look at the part number pull up the diagram identify which switch you need and replace it it's a lot cheaper than buying a new jigsaw do any of your tools need a repair visit us at ereplacementparts.com and easily find the parts you need and have them shipped right to your door